Yo, 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 ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Unprofessional Breakdown. And this time I got my man who I met via social media, Audie P. You may know him from the Audie P Show. What's going on, brother? What's up, man? How you doing, Lou? I'm just, you know, just grinding, brother. I got a haircut today. It's been a while. I was woofing. I got this event that I'm going to on Saturday. It's a boxing event, Undisputed Promotions uh, at the Carib, um, Carib Royale, which is where Combat Night is going to host their next show on March 13th. So I'm going to go scope the place out because I've never been there before. And I get to see some of my homies, my young homies box and stuff like that. So it's going to be very interesting. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, I know that, uh, that, that, that Kareem place, that's the first time Combat Night's hosting an event there, right? Yeah. Yeah. They had, um, yeah, it'll be the first MMA show at that spot. It's a resort. And, um, the second boxing, actually the third boxing show, cause they had a show there last weekend. So, um, I'm just excited to see uh, the layout, and then I'm going to envision how Combat Night is going to do the layout, because I know mm-hmm. they're pretty dope when it comes to stuff like that. But real quick, I didn't do one last week, or this past weekend, Curtis Blades versus Derek the Black Beast Lewis, man. Did you get a chance to watch it? I know we spoke a little bit of it, and you, you bet, you, you're a betting man. What, did you think it was going to go how it went, or what, what, what were you thinking when, <laughs> before everything happened? <laughs> Um, you know, I went into this fight and, you know, I was paying attention. I'm aware of both fighters and you know, I was looking at the weigh-ins and I was like, wow, Derek Lewis is in the best shape I've seen him in. He looked good. And he did look good. And I was like, all right, well, he's still Derek Lewis. Like he's a goofball, you know? So it's like, yeah. if you never take him serious, what he's going to say, I'm pretty sure he went into this. He's like, yeah, he's like, I'm going into this to wrestle. And I was like, no, you're not. Like, you yeah, know? he said he's an All-American. He called himself an All-American. Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> he's um, the hook. That was hilarious. And then, because and then, Curtis Blades is like this elite man on the ground. And you like, you almost yeah. know what he's going to do. He was so heavily favored against Derek Lewis. Like, you know, it's... But at the end of the day, I, I knew that Derek Lewis always has the chance to end it. And it's... He got that puncher's chance, man. He's the got punchers. that punchers. Anthony's heavyweight and he hits you and you go down. It's like if he hits now, you just right. You bet on this fight, right? I did bet on this fight. You um, bet on Derek? I bet on Derek. He was the second round underdog. knockout. Man, so, you know, thinking thinking about it, I was like, all right, let me put myself in Curtis's shoes, right? I'm a mm-hmm. I'm a grappler. That's Derek Lewis's you know, tends to be a weakness. You know, you he you grapple him out and get him tired. Um, mm-hmm. but he does say he just gets up, you know, like he's he's so strong. I'm thinking, so strong. you know, use my height advantage, use my you know, my body advantage, put him up against the cage, dirty box, just make him tired, get him down, and just make it a, a freaking dog fight, you know. But wrestling, a lot of grappling exchanges. A lot of grappling exchanges. You know, that's me thinking this is what I would do as Curtis. Again, is the unprofessional breakdown. These guys have way more professional fights than I do. And I'm yeah, like, man, exactly. that's, how, that's how I would do it, using his body and all that. And, um, and then as far as Derek, I'm like, fuck, I just, you just got to catch him one time. Just boom, catch him one time, and, and you're done, Dada. And you know how much power? You, you have to be so strong. To land that KO, the KO that he did, where the guy's shooting in with an uppercut. You know, we drill that all the time, right? Oh, you just drill him. But we drill mm-hmm. him to, obviously, we drill to knock him out. But I've never seen me, personally. I'm, you can correct me because you, you're the real analyst in this. I, <laughs> I've never seen a knockout from that, where the guy's going to shoot and just gets him with an uppercut and just out cold. I've never seen that. I've seen, you know, great uppercuts. I was discussing with you yesterday on our conversation, you know, Frankie Edgar. Mm-hmm. Um, who else? Uh, I think in boxing, Anthony Joshua landed a crazy uppercut on Vladimir Klitschko, but I don't think it knocked him down or I think it knocked him down, not out though. But like, I've seen those uppercuts, but not like that, man. I, I didn't, I didn't think it, he's got to be so strong, man. Derek Lewis got to be so fucking strong, bro, to, to just Dude. do that on a crazy. guy like Curtis. But Curtis has been KO'd before, but still, like, <laughs> yeah, I just don't know how you generate that much. I don't know. He didn't even sit down on it. I don't know, man. It's just he's so strong, bro. You know, the thing is he, uh, you know, he doesn't have a high guard. So his hands are lower. And he didn't even yeah. get a chance to kind of, like, 
even try to like bolo it or anything. It yeah, was yeah. down there because he has a low guard. And when yeah, he yeah. stopped for that double leg, it was just right there. He didn't even have to cock it back. It was just a few inches, just solid force. Just that small amount of space his arm traveled generated so much torque to knock out a bigger man than him, basically. Jesus dude. Christ. And Curtis is a big dude. It's not like he's taller I mean, than they're him. both I mean, big, they're heavyweights, but he's tall. Yeah. Right? He's tall. What do you think about that first round? I feel like it was I gave it to Curtis, to be honest. But it was I gave it to Curtis. It was 10 9. I gave yeah, 10-9 it, it to was Curtis. Close. It was close. It, he was busier. Right? Yeah. He was busier. More he landed active, more sure. strikes and stuff. I was like, when are you going to shoot, dude? Like, wh- I may- maybe he was anticipating that. Yeah. Right? I'm like, I don't know. I mean, that would have been the safe route for sure. That's, bro, against a guy like Derek, you got to be nothing but safe. You have nothing to prove. Yeah, exactly. Nothing to prove. You're going to get knocked the fuck out, bro. You know, like, <laughs> and I want him to you be champ it. so bad. I want him to be a champ so bad because he's just so different than everything else. Stipe is great. I love I love Stipe. Um, he started that whole Ohio championship shit, and then LeBron won. You know the the Cavs won and all that yeah. stuff. But um, you know he's marketable. He's a likable guy. Um, who else? Uh, Francis Ngannou is another guy. Is just a typical heavyweight. He looks the part, right? But Derek Lewis does not look the part. He does not look the part, and he knocks your ass out, and then he's just the shit that he says is just, like, unconventional, right? He's like, he would be your unconventional heavyweight champ, <laughs> like James he's Tony. Funny. He's funny. He's a yeah. funny guy. Yo, he's, he's genuinely funny. Yeah. Do you follow him on, on Instagram? Uh, I've seen some of his stuff, and I think, I don't think I follow him, but I've, I've seen a lot of his stuff, obviously, and it's, it's, the, it's funny. It's, the stuff that he it's posts entertaining. on Instagram. Yeah. yeah, the stuff, and then he always puts that, a tag, he's okay, or she's okay, and it's like... Women like this. The other day, he posted one where this chick, this big chick, was uh, walking in the middle of, of a dude drifting, and then the the car hit her, and then she got back up. Like I don't know that that that's uh, oh, but it was a good fight. Um, who do you think? What, what do you think? You give Derek Lewis the next title fight, or or what? You know, with John Jones being in the mix, like he's gonna get the next title fight. Of, when is he of, even coming back? Because that that plays a role. He's Man, obviously the so, golden boy for it, so it's like whenever he wants to come back, it's like, sorry, we gotta cancel this next fight, and we gotta run this yeah. John Jones right here. Oh, you dude. you train you train mixed martial arts, or I know you train. You train at ATT, right? Yes, sir. Well, um, ATT Longwood. which one? Longwood. Longwood. And what do you what, what do you train specifically? Do you train everything, or just jujitsu, kickboxing? What what do you do? Well, now I've gotten into training everything, but when Good. I started off, it was just Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Nice. And I did that for probably a year. Actually, I was doing it up until COVID happened. Okay. Um, I was I was doing it, and, you know, the longer time passed, as I even got closer to COVID, I was training more and more. Even when COVID happened, I was training like six days a week. Almost. Like I was in there on Saturday, you oh, know? Dope. yeah. So it's like I, I was really into it, and I still am. It's just. This whole thing has been so weird, and I had no, I haven't even heard yeah. about anybody getting COVID. But I just have a lot of high risk people around me. I know I would take COVID to the chin, but it's like, yeah, I don't even want to be responsible for that. And it's like, you it's, know, it's it's it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a hard sacrifice because it's something yeah. I'm very passionate about. But it's like, you know, yeah, still, we all took a, I took a break on that, and then you know, eventually I said, fuck it. I see the same picture, the same people. In the pictures, mm-hmm. every single time, like fuck it, I told my wife I'm going back, you know. So I, I, I've been training. I don't train every day like I used to, but I, I train. You know, if I got something lined up, then I'll I'll do a little camp for that and, and train more actively on mm-hmm. that. But what what got you into just martial arts in general? You know what, jujitsu just to start off with. Um. Well, I did karate as a kid, so like that was oh, like some martial art experience. I had I did it for a little over a year, so it wasn't anything crazy i just thought i could sidekick people in the face when i was in like fifth grade like that was <laughs> that was what karate did to me at a young age so yeah, that's I was dope. Like, all right but and then you know years went on and everything and i was i just decided i'm like yeah I'm trying to trying to see about jujitsu you know i hear a lot of people talking about it you know it's been getting more and more popular since it was invented and yeah, I guess it just got enough traction where it got to me and it really hit me in a way where i was like you know let me try this and it wasn't like I'm the type of person where it's like, when I want to do something, I'm going to do it. So I went to ATT, you know, I 
I saw the kids rolling because it was right after work. So, you know, little kids class going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I went in there and I talked to this guy at the front desk, Cole Hingle, a black belt uh, jujitsu at ATT Longwood and still my instructor. He, uh, yeah. he was there and he talked to me and told me about it. And then we went in the office, you know, talk business. And I was like, I'll sign up for a year right now. And I was like, never even done it before. Don't want to do a trial class. Let's go. You're just you know, ready to go. Let's That's go, awesome, dog. Man. Let's go. And That's now. Were, were you before you signed up? Were you a fan of MMA? Oh before yeah, I was you signed a up. Fan of MMA. Okay. Um, I always watched that kind of stuff. Um, before I started training jujitsu, I thought that I could wrestle. Uh, my dad wrestled. You know. Oh, seven dope. Years. Um, uh, you know, and he, uh, you know, he taught me some stuff when I was a kid. So I thought I knew how to like shoot a double and stuff like that, but. You know, it was like that false objective reality before you actually start training. Yeah, yeah I guess you, it was like above average. Yeah. I guess it was like above average if you take like everybody on the planet. <laughs> but when you hold yourself to a higher standard, such as the martial arts community, when it comes to martial arts, it's like a different level. You realize, oh my gosh, I don't know anything. Like that yeah. wouldn't work. That wouldn't work at all against anyone who could see that coming. Like, you know, it's super telegraph, like it's terrible technique. Somebody's oh, yeah. gonna get hurt. You don't know it works until until you do it live. You know, like when I started a long time ago, I, I learned, um, you know, I learned the arm bar. And then mm -hmm. that was the first move. This was like 11, 12 years ago. And I'm like, okay, yeah. You know, I was, a, you know, come from boxing first, right? And I'm like, yeah, I don't know about this, you know, but I know I got to do this if I want to fight MMA because I knew mm -hmm. I was going to fight MMA. I just knew somebody was going to give me the opportunity. So I learned the arm bar. And then like I, I'm, I'm, I signed up. And I have a couple of weeks and then we, you know, we're grappling, grappling and I did it and I did it on somebody that's bigger than me, way bigger than me. Cause I'm, I'm small, you know? And I'm like, Oh my God, this shit really works. But the day that I found out that it really works, I was, uh, at that time I was training at Gracie Baja in um, Mills mm -hmm. in downtown Orlando. And this, this meathead guy comes in. Right. And, um, just like real cocky and stuff. And, uh, the guy at the time that was running, it was for being, for being Hosa. And then he goes, okay, you go with this guy. And then the guy's like, oh, I'll go with him, with me. And I was just like a white belt, you know what I'm saying? And I was like, oh, shit, you know? And um, it was like Nogi. So we're rolling, rolling, rolling. I, I take it back. And then, like, I submit it. Like, I, I put a rear naked choke, Mata Leon. And, like, he was on his knees. And then, like, he kind of slammed back, you know, because people think yeah. that works. Mm -hmm. And then I just didn't let go. And I, I didn't hurt myself. And then he tapped. And when he tapped, he got on his knees and he bam, slammed, slammed the mat. And then he got up and he left. And then there, I was like, yo, this shit works. Cause <laughs> this motherfucker was like 200 plus pounds. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm small. So I was like, I'm, I'm still I'm 130. I'm at my heaviest ever, 130. Mm -hmm. But at that time, it was, you know, 12 years ago. So I was uh, fucking, you know, 20, 21. And I was like a buck 24 you know, wet. And I was like, wow, this shit works, man. And then that's when I just really, really fell in love with jujitsu. And I oh, was like, man. yeah, this shit is fucking amazing. I, I love it. You know, it's addicting. I can't, that's a, you it's know, a good feeling. As a, oh, it as is a great guy, too. It, Cause I'm, it I'm, is a great I'm feeling, man. Either, dude, I am five, eight and then three quarters. I rounded up to five, nine, but I'm, I'm <laughs> like, I'm the heaviest I've ever been right now too. And I'm right under 150. So I've never gotten higher than I am right now. Um, I remember one time I had been training for like probably like four months. And at this point, like I'm in love with it. Like we're in the honeymoon stage. I'm in there every yeah. day. I'm watching yeah, yeah. moves on YouTube. I'm like <laughs> dreaming about it. Every time I'm with a woman, I'm attempting moves <laughs> on her. And you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah, for sure. It's not a game. It's like, let me put me in your guard real quick. You're like, my what? Like, you know, put it, just wrap your legs around me. Let me yeah, try yeah, something. Yeah. yeah, anything. Um, and I remember it was like, it was like four months in. And this dude came in, never seen him before. And the dude's a chat. Dude's like six one. Like mm. he should he swole, like like perfect build. Like that's like exactly what you want in like a Spartan soldier. And I was like, all right, like let's go. And I'm like, what's up? But I could tell like the gi was a little like it was new. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. It was new. So I'm like, all right, you know, let's see what I've actually learned. This guy's bigger than me. You know, he's probably mm -hmm. he's definitely got strength on me. So it's like, let's see. I'm fast and I've been paying attention. I've been, you know, working those same three moves in the gi. <laughs> but 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, hey, so, repetition. Oh, so yeah, I'm like, all right, well, we start on our knees. I'm kind of going like this, and he he engages. I'm like, oh, okay. So I'm in side control now, bottom side control. And I remember when I first started, I actually took a couple private. Um, right after, I was like, dude, I got to get like these fundamentals going, like mm-hmm. for real. And I remember we, there was like half a private where I just worked on side control escapes. And it was like, I asked Cole everything. And so I remember I'm like, you got to put the frame in, you got to get it out. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, as a smaller guy, that could be a hard position to get out of, especially if somebody's like holding you down. That's my least favorite position. I'd rather, yeah, I'd rather yeah. be mounted than that because I can get out of mount easier. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, you know, they keep you there and they put the shoulder on you. It could be tough. It could be that tough pressure. sometimes, yeah. And, you know, he put me in shoulder pressure and I, uh, I, uh, I put my frame in, you know, and I got some space and I knew how to shrimp. I was like, shrimping is so important. If people don't get mm-hmm. it. People don't, I see them shrimping in the beginning yeah. of class. I'm like, you got to tighten up. You need that. You need to know this. And, uh, I shrimp out. I recover guard. I'm in full guard right now. This guy's big. He's posturing up and everything, you know, but I'm small. I got that core dog. So I just, <laughs> I sit yeah, yeah, up, yeah. I, put the, I put the left one in behind the neck and I put the right one in. The uh, okay. right side the of the baseball? neck, baseball choke. Yeah, baseball it's bat. Tight. Yeah. Hands are touching. And then I move the left leg and I throw the sweep. Now I'm on top and I'm holding the baseball choke and I'm just twisting like a gator. And, <laughs> I, and I didn't stop rolling, dog. And he did it. Oh, and he was like so red. And he was like, oh my God. Like, I didn't know you oh, do you know, that. that. You know, that baseball, the baseball choke is crazy because people get put out like that. I put two people, like two old teammates out like that and I feel. Mm-hmm. I felt so bad. I feel bad thinking about it now. You know, mm-hmm. uh, same thing from guard. And then I let them think they're passing my guard. And then I just go, 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 go. And then they just snoring. And, I, you know, it, it's an effective move. That's a very, very good move to use four months in. You know, what I'm yeah. that's awesome. You don't, you don't learn that shit to like maybe a year, two years. You know, some, some instructors don't teach you that stuff because that's an advanced move. That's pretty awesome, man. It works. Jiu-Jitsu is great, man. It's great for little guys, man. I love it, dude. Great. It's the just, best thing. The best thing you could do if you're a little guy, literally. Yeah, man. I love the gi. I love no gi. You know, um, I you know, I don't care if I tap out. You know, I don't give a fuck. Some people care, but I don't care. You know, it's like whatever. Tap out, boom, let's go again. Let's, uh, let's yeah. go again. I'm I'm not gonna fall for that again. You know, so I see sometimes when people grapple with me, they get frustrated because I'm like, they're like, I bet in their mind, they're like, this little motherfucker got yeah. that. Stay still, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but yo, tell me more about the Audi P show. Where can we find it? What days does it drop on? Like, you know, your Instagram, all that stuff. I'm going to, and then I'm going to put it on the screen. That way the people that listen, whoever you are, can go and follow your show because I think you're a very intelligent man. You do a lot of research and your production is top, top level. So um, shout out to your producers. They do a great job. You do a great job. You ask, you ask the right questions and I really love your work. Thank you so much, man. And thank you for allowing me to be on your show. First yeah, of all, thanks for coming on. This. No, it's awesome. Um, and shout out to my production team, Luis and Tyler. You know, they work hard. You know, we we have a whole oiled engine um, on the surface from what people see mm-hmm. on the show. So I guess we're doing something right. There's always technical difficulties. I'm sure you know about that. And it's just yeah. it's stuff you have to work through. But we do release episodes on Saturdays uh, just once a week for now, you know, give you Good. time to digest all the information and gems we're dropping on the show. Um, yeah. but it's, it's, it's been a journey. I mean, I started it in November and it's, it's came a long way in the past four months. It's called the Audi P show and, uh, you can check it out on YouTube, Spotify, Apple podcast. I have an RSS feed. I have an Instagram, the Audi P show. Audi is a U D I E. Let's go. Thank you so I much, man. Ah, uh, Matt. Thank you, man. And, um, I'll see you. Um, you can always come to my crib and train too. I live like 30 minutes from you. Oh, that's um, perfect. I got, I got some mats and stuff like that. And, uh, I'll see you around brother. And, uh, thanks for coming on and I'll see you guys. at the next event. I'm going to check. Yep. I'm, I'll be there. For, I'm going, I'll be I'm there going for on sure. the 13th. Awesome, man. I'm glad, glad you're going to be there, brother. And, uh, I'll be there. I'll be commentating and that's <laughs> it, man. Guys, <laughs> thanks for coming through y'all. I'll see y'all again. Peace. Peace.